Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the primary trigonometric ratios, so that's sine, cosine, and tangent, to solve for angles. So we actually get to do something useful with sine, cosine, and tangent today, which I'm really excited for, and you should be too. So just uh, before we jump in, let's just do a quick recap of what we covered last time. So, ka toa. If you're boring, if you're really exciting, you pronounce the H's. So, ka toa. Okay, so what do those mean? These are essentially the definitions of the three primary trigonometric ratios. So sine, uh, theta is the variable we use for an angle usually. It's kind of like a lowercase o in cursive. So sine of an angle is the ratio, so the fraction, of the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine, always of an angle, right? Sine and cosine always have to have an angle next to them. Cosine of an angle is the A over the H. So what are the A and the H again? That is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And finally, we've got TOA, tangent. Tangent of our angle is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, something I didn't really stress last video that maybe I should have, these are actually the definitions of what sine, cosine, and tangent are. If you have a triangle with a right angle in it, you will always have a hypotenuse, an opposite, and an adjacent relative to whatever angle you're choosing. So let's call this our angle theta. So across from theta is the opposite, and down here is the adjacent. So sine is literally this opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine is literally the ratio of the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent is the ratio of the opposite divided by the adjacent. Uh, which, by the way, is also the slope of the triangle, which we're going to be talking about a lot later. Okay, so that's a quick recap. Let's actually start using this to do something interesting and useful. How can we use the sine, cosine, and tangent to solve for missing angles? So our steps are going to be roughly the same thing that we did last time. First thing we're going to do, we're going to identify the angle we want to find. Now, remember, this is really important because depending which angle you pick, you're going to get a different opposite side. So over here, I chose uh, this angle in pink, and this side ended up being my opposite. If I was caring about this angle here, let's call it, I don't know, beta. If we were looking at angle beta up here, then this side would actually be my opposite. So depending which angle you pick matters a lot for which is your opposite and adjacent side. So it's always a good idea to start there. Now, based on the angle that you care about, you always want to label your sides. Okay, now the order you label your sides kind of matters. Your first one should always be your, actually I shouldn't use A, that's a really bad idea because A is adjacent. Let's do I. So the first side, I, should be your H, your hypotenuse. Your second side you label should always be your opposite. And the third side you label should always be your adjacent. Yes, it kind of matters. If you label the hypotenuse anything other than first, you're likely to make mistakes. So always label your hypotenuse first. And of course, the hypotenuse is the one across from the 90 degrees. All right, then third step, exactly the same as yesterday. Third step, you then set up your trig ratio. Now, the difference today is you aren't necessarily going to know all of your sides. So we're going to add sort of a, a comma here. Set up your trig ratio using um, two sides you know. And to find an angle, you need to know at least two sides. If you don't know two sides, you don't have enough information to solve it. Now this last step is the only one that's going to be new today you are going to use something called the inverse trig ratios to solve the equation. So use the inverse trig functions to solve. Now you may have noticed yesterday when you're playing around with sine, cos, and tangent in your calculator, if you looked at your calculator, um, that above sine, there's this funny little sin minus one. 
and above cosine on your calculator, there's a little cos minus one. And above tangent, there's a little tan minus one. And these three things are your inverse functions. So we have talked about powers probably already. You probably already know what negative exponents. Anyway, if you don't, the idea of a negative exponent is a negative exponent changes multiplication with an exponent to division with an exponent. And as you know, division is the opposite of multiplication. And so we have sort of borrowed that idea, that idea of a negative exponent being the opposite operation, the opposite of multiplication, the opposite of a positive power. And we borrowed that symbol to mean the opposite of our sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So first three steps, the exact same as when you're setting up a basic trig ratio, a basic trig fraction uh, using your sine, cosine, and tangent. We're just gonna add one extra step on the end today. So let's jump in and try a problem. So we need to solve for the angle with a question mark. Hopefully that is obvious. That's the one that we care about. So this is, I guess I'll label it. So that's the angle we care about. Let's call it, I don't know, let's call it theta. Why not? So that's gonna be our angle theta. And our first side that we are going to label then is, you got it, our hypotenuse. Always label your hypotenuse first. That's really, really important. Then label your opposite, then label your adjacent. Now, this next step, I like to actually circle the two sides I'm going to use. In this case, I only know those two numbers, which means that forces me to use a particular ratio. I've got three choices, remember? I've got so, ka, or toa. So let's write those out. I've got so, I've got ka, or I have toa to choose from. Now I can't just choose whichever one I want. I need to use the one that uses the two sides that I have. The one that uses the opposite and the hypotenuse. The one that uses the opposite and the hypotenuse is so. And that's why we have this memory trick, this mnemonic, this memory device of so ka toa, is that we can quickly identify which two sides we care about. So just a quick reminder, let's write out what so stands for. This is sine of our angle is our opposite over our hypotenuse. If you're comfortable with this, you can feel free to skip this step and go right into this step if you like, which is writing out our equation with the variables we have in uh, question one. So sine of our angle, in this case I chose the variable theta, so that'll be the same. So sine of theta is our opposite is 14, and our hypotenuse is 19. Now this next step is the key step for solving for angles. What we're going to do is we are going to do the opposite of sine to both sides. So we are going to sine inverse both sides. So normally you wouldn't write this, but I'm going to show it this time since it's our first time doing it. We are going to sine inverse our left-hand side. And sine inverse and sine are opposite operations. This is exactly like multiplying by two and dividing by two. Sine and sine inverse are opposite operations, so they cancel each other. They reduce each other so that they are gone. And if we sine inverse our left-hand side, rules of algebra state, you have to do the exact same thing to the right-hand side. So we are going to sine inverse our 14 19ths that we have above. So what are we left with on the left? On the left, all that we have left is a theta. And our right-hand side then is sine inverse of uh, 14 over 19. So I'm drawing my fraction a bit backwards here, bear with me. There we go. Now this is the step where you actually need to pull out your calculator. Now, normally when I teach this, I pause right now and go around to the whole class to make sure that everyone can get this value on their calculator because it's important. And there's two types of calculators out there. There are some calculators where you can just plug this in. You can hit second function sign or shift sign to get your sign minus one. And then you can do, it'll open brackets for you even sometimes, but then in brackets you can do 14 divided by 19 and hit equal sign and it'll just do it for you. And then there are other calculators that are completely backwards to that, where what you need to do is you need to do the stuff inside your brackets first. In your calculator, you need to divide 14 divided by 19 equals, then hit second function sign or shift sign to get your sign inverse. So it's really important, I'm not even joking, you need to pause the video right now. 
pull out your calculator that you have with you and make sure that you can get 47 degrees from this. Okay, now again, I'm just gonna write out the calculator steps. If you've got, let's call it a straightforward calculator. A straightforward calculator, your button presses are going to be something like this. It's going to be second or shift. That button in the top left, usually it's yellow, that changes your functions. Then you're going to hit your sign button because above your sign button is the sign minus one. And that's the one we actually want to get. So the second function or the shift gives you the thing that's actually above the button in your calculator. So you do second function sign. Then if your calculator doesn't open a bracket for you, you're going to want to open a bracket. Then you do your division. You're going to do your 14 divided by 19. And then you're going to add a close bracket and then hit equals. Okay, if you've got a, what's called a straightforward calculator, that's what you need to do. Now, if you've got what I'm gonna call a backwards calculator, I'm really sorry, but you'll get used to it pretty quickly. If you've got a back, backwards calculator, it works like this. What you're going to do first is you're going to do your division, 14 divided by 19 equals. And then you're going to have a decimal number on your display. Then with that decimal number on the display, then you're going to hit your, your second function or your shift, whatever it is, usually it's the very top left button on your calculator, and hit your sign button that has sign minus one above it. Your sign button that has sign minus one above it. And then at the very end, actually usually you don't need to hit equals, usually that's it. And that should just give you your 47 degrees. Okay, so try it, make sure you get 47 degrees. Cool, we're back, that's awesome. I love how you guys can just pause and do that. We all have 47 degrees now, that's great. Okay, let's try another one. We're gonna start labeling our angle, uh, this angle here. I'm kind of tired of theta. Theta and I are bros, but let's do X, because you know I haven't given X much love lately. So we're gonna solve for X this time. So we need to label our triangle based on X. First thing we label though is not anything to do with X, it's the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse never moves. The hypotenuse is the one that's always across from the 90 degrees. But these two things move around depending on which angle you're using. Since we are using angle X, this side is our opposite. And this side then left here is our adjacent. Now we're going to circle the two sides we care about, O and A. O and A, is that gonna be so ka or toa? Well, there's no H in it. I can tell because I pronounced the H very clearly, which means it's gotta be a TOA question. Now, in this case, I wrote out the equation, tangent, uh, so in this case, it would be tangent of theta equals your opposite over your adjacent. If you need to write that out, that's great. I'm just gonna jump right into solving it though. I think that you guys can too. And if you need them, right, those are your equations up there. So if you need to write it down, sure, there it is. You can write it down. But usually you're going to do this often enough that you're going to want to jump right into setting up your equation. So I guess I should color code this to match. So tangent of x, because that's what we're solving for, is our opposite, 17, over our adjacent, 28. All right, so the last step of this problem is going to be to do the tan inverse to solve for x. So x is going to be... Right, when you move tangent to the other side, right, you sort of need to change it to its opposite. And the opposite of a tangent is a tan inverse. And the tan inverse is going to be our fraction, 17 over 28. Now we plug this into the calculator. Okay, you should too. Make sure you get 31 degrees. If you didn't get 31 degrees, you're using your calculator wrong. Go back to the calculator steps and check again. Okay, so that's 31 degrees. Okay, two more. I'm not going to go through all of the... Actually, yeah, I am. I am, because these triangles are all twisty and, and weird. So I'm going to do the first steps for this one anyway. This one here, we care about this angle. Let's call it Y, I guess. Let's not be, uh, you know, letterist. Let's give them all a chance. So if that's Y, then we're going to label our sides, starting with the hypotenuse. Then across from Y is our opposite, and the last side is our adjacent. Now notice this side, this triangle being all twisted around can confuse students, but if you go through carefully, always labeling your hypotenuse first, then your opposite, then your adjacent, you'll be okay. 
I'd like you to pause right now and try to solve this question. Okay, cool. Hopefully you solved it. Let's go through and do the last steps. So we care about those two sides. Those two sides are ka. And I think ka actually was green if I color coded it correctly right from the start. So let's jump in. Cos of our angle y is a fraction. It's always a fraction. And in this case, our adjacent is 23 and our hypotenuse is 29, right? Ka is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent first, then hypotenuse. Which means that y is the cos inverse of that fraction. 23 over 29. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should get that y is 38 degrees. Okay, last one. Try it right now. Uh, there we go. Now we can see the last example too. All right, cool. I'm not even gonna tell you how to do this. You should have used tangent and you should have got 53 degrees. If you got 53 degrees, that's awesome. Move on to the practice. If you didn't get 53 degrees, no fret, I'll show you right now. If you got 53 degrees though, you can skip this part. So that's my angle I care about. This is my hypotenuse. This then is my opposite. This is my adjacent. That's how I know that it is a TOA question. TOA is our tangent. So tangent of our angle, let's call this Z. Give them all a chance. All right, X, Y, and Z each had time to shine in this question or this page. So that's 52 over 39. And then uh, you're going to tan inverse. So Z is 53 degrees. Because remember, this thing here, you put inside of a tan inverse, right? And that's it. That's how you solve for angles using the primary trigonometric ratios. Hope you had as much fun as I did.